call on Government Order of the Day number two. Interrupted debate on the third reading of the Health Protection Amendment Bill. Members, when we were last debating the third reading of the Health Protection Amendment Bill, Jackie Dean had the call and has nine minutes and 50 seconds remaining if she wishes. Mr Speaker. Uh, Jackie Dean. Thank you for the opportunity, Mr Speaker, to speak in the third and final reading of the Health uh, Protection Amendment Bill. And I want to acknowledge my uh, fellow members of the Health Select Committee who uh, tussled our way through this bill. In most aspects of the bill, we were in agreement. Um, a number of measures were discussed. In fact, three uh, areas generally of measures to um, protect, further protect uh, the public from risks associated with the spread of infectious diseases, um, of concern to the public health system, and with artificial UV tanning. And you might well wonder what those, what those things got in common, but they were put together in the bill. With regards to protecting public from um, uh, risks associated with infectious diseases. The bill amends the Health Act of 1956, and what it does is it improves the tracing of people who may have an infectious disease or have been exposed to one. Why is that important? Because uh, with a number of highly contagious infectious diseases which um, enter into our, such as measles, which in, enter into our population, it is very important that health officials, when necessary, have the ability to trace those people who have been infected and those people that they have had contact or exposed with. Um, the bill increases the range of infectious diseases that are notifiable and provides options for the management of individuals with significant infectious diseases whose behaviour puts other pe people of risk of, contact, of contracting a disease. So, so not all people who have been exposed to a disease wishes perhaps to have that notified. And so there is discretion now the ability to show some pragmatic discretion to maintain people's sense of privacy and safety, but also to make sure that any highly infectious disease they may have been exposed to is not going to be further transmitted through the population. And finally, just a few words on uh, artificial UV tanning. The, the government settled on, and it is proposed in this bill, that the age restriction, restriction rather of 18 years and over, people can be, uh, people are able to use UV tanning. Um, some members of the committee and, and other parties wanted to go for a blanket ban. Not so for our for our government. And I am in in the readings in this parliament have in each time cited the fact that there are a number of people who use UV tanning um, salons or, or UV tanning beds to help maintain diseases like psoriasis, and they get benefit. Those people get benefit out of that type of UV tanning use. We also believe that people um, should be able to make an informed choice about whether, when they are, the, they are over the age of 18, they choose to use a sun bed or, or tanning device. With that said, and I know I will find disagreement around the House over that one, one portion only. This is a good, good bill. It does provide protection for the New Zealand population. I commend it to the House. I call Kevin Haig.